Alright guys, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm teaching you guys how to keep your Roblox game protected from exploiters. And I'm basically going to explain how exploits work and how you can prevent them in your Roblox games. Alright, now this is a very important video. Seriously, watch this all the way to the end. I'm going to teach you a lot of good information. And if it helps you out, leave a like and uh, subscribe for more awesome, like, you know, Roblox development content like this. But anyways, let's go and get started. Alright, so first things first. We need to understand how exploits work, okay? So basically, um, if you want to understand how exploits work, you need to know a few things, okay? Which, first of all, you need to know what filtering enabled is, and then you need to know what a server and a client is, okay? Now, filtering enabled is basically a setting in your Roblox game, well, it used to be a setting, which would make things on the client, right, which is, sorry, the client is your computer, okay, and the server is like your server, okay? But basically, filtering enabled is a setting that basically made your client... Or no, okay, if it wasn't enabled, then your client, anything that happens in the client would just happen right on the server too, okay? So if, uh, you know, if an exploiter was to exploit and change their, um, you know, coins to a million or something like that, it would happen on the server too, and the server would show every other client as well, all right? Because there's more clients than just one, right? There's like 17, 18 clients, whatever your game count is, that's how many clients there are, right? Um, or player count, sorry. But yeah, um, so basically when filter enabled is enabled though, then what happens is anything in the client that happens only happens in the client, right? And in the way that everyone else can see it is if the server does it and then shows everybody else as well. So yeah, that's kind of the best way I can put it. Um, so yeah, hope that makes sense. Basically, when filter enabled is on, which it is on by default, everyone, every game has it now. Um, what happens is anything that happens in the client only happens in the client until the server ha until it communicates to the server and then the server tells everybody else too. But you can't just communicate to the server very easily. Um, the, the only way you can is through remote events and remote functions, which I'll explain in a second here too. All right, anyway, so how do basic exploits work, okay? So most exploits work like this, okay? They have something called a script executor. And right here, I have a screenshot of a popular executor called uh, Synapse. I just looked up, a I looked up an image on it. I don't have it, okay? <laughs> um, but basically, um, it's just like a, it's like a script, right, that they can run in any game, okay? Now, the thing is, this is a local script, okay? So they don't run a server script and they can't change it for everyone else as well, right? So anything they run in the script only happens for them, all right? Now that's the good news, it only happens for them, all right? Now, but here's the problem, okay? They can still fire remote events and remote functions from their local scripts, right? So if your remote event and remote function is being treated like it won't be fired when it shouldn't be, well then you're wrong, okay? And that's why you're gonna have the exploiters ruin your game because your remote events aren't secured, your remote functions aren't secured either, okay? So yeah. All right, now here's the good news, okay? Most exploiters can't script, okay? 90% of the people who use script executors and exploits are, are skits, okay? Meaning they can't script at all and they just copy and paste scripts from other people and they can't script, okay? That's that's the point. So that's good news, um, but here's the problem, okay? The, the people who actually can script, they'll either write scripts and release it publicly or they'll write scripts and sell them, all right? And then they'll eventually get leaked. But basically, um, the way people find these scripts and how you can find them to patch them uh, is go to like, the, there's only like Discord servers, right? For people with exploits who post their scripts or whatever. Or um, there's a other <clears throat> There's a popular uh, forum website called Vermillion, and that website basically is just for exploiters and like stuff like that. There is like just forums on there, but basically it's for mainly exploiters on Roblox. And um, you can actually go on there and look up the name of your game. And odds are, if your game is popular, you'll definitely find an exploit for it, right? If your game has over like 100k visits, there's probably an exploit for your game publicly available somewhere. Uh, I, I mean, a script, right? Um, so yeah. Anyway, so how do they actually know what to write for these scripts, right? How do they know what the event's called? How do they know what to write for all this stuff? And yeah, how do they know what to write? All right, so basically, um, they use common tools that are, uh, that are you know, publicly available for exploiters, okay? So um, to the two tools that are probably most um, commonly used to write exploits or write scripts for games are Dex and Remote Spy, okay? And um, what these do, okay, is, um, well, first of all, Remote Spy, I'll explain that one first. Remote Spy is a tool that basically just allows you to tell whenever an event is fired. So they can do something like with a Remote Spy and whenever an event is fired, they'll see that, okay? So for example, if you have like an event in your replicated storage called like Give Coins and Give Coins uh, event gets fired, they know and they also know what happens in the game because they're playing the game at the same time, right? And then they'll know what that event does. So even if you renamed it to like, you know, um, Three five seven five five five, and that's what your event's called. It doesn't really matter because they can still just kind of reverse engineer it 
with knowing what the event does at the same time. So yeah, although it may, it may throw them off a bit more, but you know, it, it also throws you off a little bit too. So yeah, anyways, so that's what Remote Spy does. It basically just tells you whenever an event is fired, all right? Dex Explorer um, is a tool that basically lets you have the Explorer in a Roblox game, all right? So it only shows you um, local scrap though, like local stuff, so that's the good news, but it's just like a tool that pops up on a Roblox game, okay? So, um, now I'm actually going to show you how you can, or like how not you can write a script, but how they will write a script, okay? So how someone joins the game, they want to exploit it, and how they start writing the scripts, okay? Um, but yeah. Also guys, just so you know, if you are an exploiter watching this video, okay, I, I hope you know, if you're using a free exploit, okay, um, I'm not going to name him, but if you're using a free exploit, okay, just know you probably have a virus. You you probably do, and you're probably on a botnet, and your computer's probably getting used for, like, Bitcoin mining or something, okay? Just don't exploit. It's, it's not worth it. Uh, I mean, the paid ones, I'd probably assume they, want, they aren't a virus, but who knows, you know? Um, just, just be really careful when you're doing this stuff, man. It's it just, it's not something you want to do, and I... Uh, in the end, it's not going to be good for you. Okay, that's all. That's all I'm going to say. Just, just don't do it. All right. Uh, anyways, um, all right. Next, next slide. All right. So basically, here's a um a picture of Dex in Remote Spy. Dex right here, as you can see, is just the Explorer, right, and the properties. Um, but then Remote Spy is just um you know where you can see all the events and it tells you all the events being fired at once. Um, and you can spy on them. And if you spy on a remote, that basically just means you're like you're watching to see if it gets fired. Um, you know. So yeah. Anyways, that's just kind of what that does, and I'm, I'm not using these tools, okay, I just looked it up, so, yeah, but also, it's honestly not very uncommon for um, developers to actually buy, like, exploits just to test their own game, so, like, just so you know, if you see, like, I, I've seen many popular developers doing that for their own games, so, um, I guess that could be a reason why you buy it, but don't just buy, buy an exploits right now, okay, <laughs> um, but anyways, alright, so, um, I went back on accident, sorry. All right, so now, all right, so why are most Roblox games vulnerable, okay? And how can you secure your game? All right, so here's the problem with most Roblox games, okay? They don't secure their events because they either don't know how Roblox games work or they don't know how to secure their events, okay? So basically, if you ever in one event called Give Coins, okay, and it's replicated storage, all right, and your game needs this event, okay? It needs this event because it needs to know when you want to give the coins, right? And if you change the coins on your, on your uh, client, um, in a client or a local script, it obviously would only happen for you, right? So you need to make sure you actually tell the server is what is why you made this event for your game, and that way, you know, whenever you need to change it, it'll actually change for everybody too. Okay? So basically, what that event does, it just gives you coins. As you can see, it says give coins on server event connect function player, and it gives you five thousand coins. All right. Now here's the problem: anybody can fire events. Anyone, okay? Anyone with an exploit, at least. All right. So you need to be very careful because somebody can just say. Game to replicate storage, give coins, fire server, and boom. And then they put it in a wild true do loop, and then they have a bajillion coins. Okay, that's how stuff like this works. All right, so what you need to do is make sure that this part right here, where um, you know you actually have how the event is fired and what how the event reacts to that, you need to make sure this is secured in some way. All right, so you need to make sure it's like either time based, they can only get coins every so often, or you know, um, if they're firing it rapidly, then you can kick them, you know, because that way you know they're doing something wrong. A lot of different ways, obviously different for every game, but I'm going to show you guys some more ways you can prevent this, okay? Um, so, yeah. All right, so let me show you guys a practical example of running an exploit, okay? So, for example, let's say a game, okay, needs that event to work, okay? So, you need that event, um, but, you, you know, you how do we stop them from firing the event, all right? Well, the truth is you can't, all right? Um, some people try uh, renaming their events, like I said earlier. They rename them to random things, which which can work. But in the end, they're gonna find out what they do, and they're gonna they're gonna just eventually just start firing. Okay, so I, honestly, I don't do it. I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, if you want to, you can, but it's I wouldn't do it. Anyways, so for the give coins event example, right? Because every 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 event every every example is gonna be different. Um, what I would do, okay, is time the event. Okay, so basically, like when the event gets fired. You just want to check to see if it's being fired rapidly, okay? Because then you can see it's an exploiter. Um, but like, there's a lot of other ways you can do this too. I think timing is probably the easiest way. But just keep this in mind, okay? Always know, always, always, always know that anyone can fire any events, okay? So when you're writing what the event's going to do and how it's how you're going to respond when it's fired, just know that it can be fired, okay? Just know that. All right, so um, yeah. All right, next slide. All right, so um, also like I said, just I just said a second ago, 
just know that anything you, anything the client tells you is potentially manipulated, so don't trust it, okay? Do not trust your client, what I'm trying to say. So if your game has a shop, make sure you're checking to see the player's coins on a server script, not a local script, okay? Because a, a player on a local script can just change their properties, right? They can just do game.players dot their name dot coins or dot values equal to a bajillion, right? And then if you check to see their coins on, the, on a local script, well, then you just saw their exploited coin value, and now you think they're they're good, but they're really not good, okay? So that, that can be a problem. So make sure you're checking to see everything on a server script, too. That's very important. Some people can forget to do that, which is pretty simple, but just make sure you do that. It's just simple to understand. That's how oh, you can fix a lot of problems. All right, so, yeah. All right, also, just so you know, there are certain plugins you can use to um, uh, obfuscate. I don't know how to say that word, to be honest. Uh, obfuscate. Uh, but your scripts, which basically means like you scramble all the words, right? So they're hard to read. Um, so that's um, kind of useful sometimes. I don't use it, like I said, uh, or I should into that. I don't use it personally, but it does work for some people. And um, you know, when you have a very important game that you need to be um, making sure no one exploits on, this is, you want to take all the precautions possible. So maybe this work for you. Look into that more definitely. But um, yeah, that's that's another option you can take. But basically, rule number one of preventing, preventing exploiters is just never trust a client. Okay. Anything the client tells you is potentially manipulated and just a lie. All right, just know that. All right. Um, another thing I, I you know, people ask me is, uh, can you steal like assets and maps? Like basically, like people can steal your maps, right? Like uh, you, you might have seen like one of your games has been completely stolen, even though you never sent it to them, you never gave them the map or anything like that. Um, but the truth is, you really can't do much about it. Okay, there are actually local scripts where basically what they do is they just copy literally everything in your game to a um another file, right? So there are scripts and exploiters that'll do that, and um, they can just steal your map, okay? But the good news is they can't steal your uh, server scripts, okay? So the game won't work, it'll be just a map, all right? Now, why is this? Is there anything that robots can do to like actually help this? Like, um, you know, it's very easy to steal places, okay? When you have an exploit, it's very easy to steal them, all right? So basically, um, this guy actually named Echo Reaper on the dev forum, he has a very good, um, a very good explanation of this right here, and basically what he said is this, okay? He said, in general, users feel it's too easy to steal places, all right? And it is not possible for Roblox to prevent place stealing, okay? You can't play a Roblox game, or any game for that matter, if your client doesn't know what the game should look like, all right? You'd be seeing a blank screen. So Roblox has to send the clients this information. Um, you know, this information can be used to recreate the level, geometry, and building, and potentially anything else. Clients die on your game. There's nothing new, and every game can have its assets ripped or extracted, all right? That's the truth. You really can't help this. Um, your maps getting, if your map gets stolen, just know that you can try to like claim that definitely, I think. Um, but you really can't help it being stolen. Um, but just know their game won't work. Okay, they can't just steal the server scripts too. That's good news. All right, anyways. So um, some some exploits are like no clip and flying, right? Those are very popular, like, you know, no clip where you go through walls and then flying when you just fly. Um, so what can you do about these ones, right? Um, well, honestly, there's not really much you can do about these, unfortunately. You can do stuff like to see if the player is moving faster um, for a long period of time or you can see if they're at a certain position in the map. You know what I'm saying? You can do stuff like that, but it, it really does get really tedious and really annoying when you do stuff like that. But you can. That, that is an option, you know. Like I said, it depends on how how or, or how important exploiters are or how like you know how important your game is that doesn't have exploiters there's stuff like that you know you might want to prioritize that more but like you know it, it's just it's, it's what you want to put into it right um but yeah all right so um uh, so also with no clip too like things like your character's human at root part sometimes gets deleted so if you notice that then you can kick the player or whatever or you can ban them so that's one thing to look out for and um yeah like i said like i said if you want to if you want to prevent certain things like this you need to be very creative and you need to put a lot of work into things like this it's just it's a lot of time and effort unfortunately but you know that's what you have things like you have things like um anti-cheat scripts which people put like literally you know countless hours into and um you know things like that can work but just be careful with those too because a lot of those a lot of times like free anti-cheat scripts and have viruses too so be careful with that anyways um although they're exploit like where you fling people um that one actually can be prevented pretty easily um the people can actually fling you if they um use an exploit which basically all they do is like kind of collide with you in weird ways and then it eventually flings you so uh, if you want to fix that all you have to do is just disable like character collisions and that way people can't collide with each other and then you won't have any fling problems so um, if fling is a problem in your game then you can try that so yeah anyways all right so that's pretty much it guys just keep in mind never trust a client okay 
always be sure to secure your remotes as much as you possibly can seriously um and also let me know if you have any questions below guys i, I i'm willing to help you out guys trust me i've had problems with this myself i know what it's like for a game to be exploited and also guys look on look on the like the the you know the forums like the hacker forums stuff like that like vermilion look on there and see if you can uh, find your, like scripts for your game and then it'll actually tell you how to patch it. Because if you can see the scripts that's being exploited, you know, if you can see the scripts that people are running on your game, right? And see what they're what they're doing to exploit, then it's very easy to patch that stuff as well. So yeah. Alright, so um be sure to leave a like and subscribe and uh, you'll see more, you know, awesome Roblox development and related videos like this one. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope it's helped you out. If you guys want a more in-depth uh, tutorial on exploiting, it's kind of just like the beginners, uh, beginner stuff. If you want more in-depth, let me know. I will be willing to make that. I honestly might make a series on how to prevent this stuff. Um, you know, it's important to know, seriously. Uh, so yeah, I hope it's helped you out, guys. Let me know if you did. I'll see you guys very soon. And uh, I'll see you guys next Saturday at the Road Tank 2 as well, live. If you don't know what that is, look it up, I guess. All right, see you guys. <laughs>